excited, Mr. Stu. Glad you're here. I'm excited as well. You uh, Big week. Had... Big week. Big week. What's going on this week? We're, we're teaching people how to write books. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. The Write Your Book.ai you you challenge. And you are. I'm not. But we're... You are. <laughs> you're going through it, right? Uh, no, I haven't. I've, I've missed both days, and I apologize. Uh, it's just not busy. too. It's not too late to catch up, Stu. It's not too late to catch up. You're not bullying me this this time to write a book. <laughs> wow. I'm selling oh, books. I'm selling books. I'm not writing books this week. Well, you know, Stu, you can actually use a book to help you sell other books. That is true. And uh, one of the great things you could do just to sell you because it's not too late to catch up, you create a book using the new challenge. And then you use that book as a bonus that you give to people whenever they buy any of your existing books. I so I'm just, love it. I'm just trying to put a little extra money in your pocket before Christmas, Stu, as friends do. I like that. You could also write this book, and it could be the basis of your Black Friday special. You could take care of that now instead of Ooh. scrambling at the end. Yeah, I know. Okay, you got me thinking. And uh, with the genies and everything we have in the Write Your Book AI authority book challenge it has never been easier for you to write a book never ever in the history of everness has it been easier but enough about you Stu. it's all about me today i'm just playing <laughs> so you had an interesting experience um yesterday you got to meet a cool dude yeah who, who has a book that i knew of him because of his book tell a yeah, quick that's story that's a very about good point yeah like you that. know uh there's a former navy seal uh, Jason Redman, who was injured, very seriously injured, like shot in the face type injured and um, survived and has gone on to be, a, you know, just a an example of resilience and uh, leadership and, you know, just so many different things, faith and relationships. And that's really what he does now. He's retired from the Navy and he was at the Naval Academy and he came to our training group just to say, Hey, to all the kids that want to uh, later become uh, SEALs or special ops members and just talk for over an hour. And it was really incredible and enlightening and just, uh, it was a lot of fun. So I was glad I was able to pull that off. And that environment, the shed, uh, I was lucky enough to be there a couple of weeks ago and it's, it's, it's a dungeon, man. It's a dungeon of training and I would expect nothing better. It's the perfect place to do yeah. what you guys do. No AC. So, yeah. Just no gritty. heat. No, 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 yeah, no, no heat. AC, no heat. Good yeah. golly. Yeah. It's, it's a, mm. it's a joy. Well, that's really cool. And, you know, interestingly enough, by having a book, I knew who that guy was. Yeah. And, you know, you had not met him, but you knew his story because of his book. Yeah. And so books are super important if you want to establish authority, if you want to build your business. And so today we're talking about how to turn your book into a lead generation machine by putting little trip wires and lead magnets in there. And we're going to hit it kind of rapid fire, give you guys some cool stuff. But uh, Stu. Yes. I'm going to turn it over to you as the podcast producer, chief interviewer. Uh, I'm going to let you guide this and, and see what you can get out of me. All right. I I just want to know what's the number one thing you want to do with your book? Most people think the number one thing you want to do with your book is make money. But what I figured out a long time ago is that the number one thing you want to do with your book is get people onto your list get there. Number one, you want to get them onto an email list. Number two, if you can't do that, you want to at least have them following you on social media. You want to get it to the point where you use this book to build an audience that you can then sell more books and stuff to. But the biggest mistake that you can make is have a book, promote the crap out of the book, spend a year or more making it, spend a year or more promoting the hell out of it, and then you end up with nothing. You got no list. You got nothing. And you probably didn't make actually that much money off the book. That's a sad thing. And I know people, you and I know people who've done that. 
oh, that, sure. that actually are famous authors who have no list. They have no platform. And that's what you got to, that's now what everybody looks for is, is as, as an author, as an entrepreneur, there's no difference now between being an author, being an entrepreneur. Um, if you want to be successful, you've got to have a platform. Platform simply refers to how many people you got on the list, how many people are following you on social media. That's it. So that book needs to be a vehicle for getting them onto the list. And so even if you're publishing on Amazon, you want to make sure that you are able to have mechanisms in your book that get them off of the Amazon platform and get them into your sphere of influence. So you want to capture that email. You want to capture that SMS if that's how you're doing it. There's a lot of rules around SMS now that I just am not messing around. I don't mess around with it, but some people do. You want to get that like on Facebook. You, you want to capture them into your network on LinkedIn. Uh, whatever you're going to do, get them to interact with you, follow you on YouTube. Uh, you have a ton of people that follow you on YouTube and, and TikTok and other stuff like that. Just, just any kind of way that you can get them out of that book into your world so you can start pushing more stuff to them. What determines whether or not you get them onto your social media followers list or get them on your email list? Um, I think like your audience is part of it, you know? So you have like young guys that, that maybe look at email, like it's an, a dinosaur type thing. So you might want True. to start out trying to get them to follow you on Instagram or something like that, where they religiously look at that all the time, or as opposed to my audience that, you know, they're on Facebook, but they check email. It's a little bit older crowd, you know, 30 plus. Yeah. I'm uh, excited to get email, Jim. I'm no, excited. you're not. No, you're not. I used to be. You remember back in the day when oh, that yeah. was the thing? Ding. You know? Ooh, ooh, it somebody would tell sent me. me something. My computer would tell me I got mail. Yeah. That yeah. was exciting. Do you ever get rid of that AOL address? You still Oh, no, I still have AOL. Using that? Okay. I have AOL, I have Gmail, I have I have multiple. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, I mean, ultimately though, I mean, just just as an aside, one of the things that you might really consider doing is getting people to give you some, give them a reason to give you their physical mailing address. And I want you to think about this for a second. Pretty much, unless you're sending severed heads through the mail, you put a stamp on something, the post office has to deliver it. All right. Not talking about bulk mail and stuff. Put, you know, a stamp on there, put it in a FedEx envelope, something like that. You send it to somebody, they're going to get it. 20 years ago, 10 years ago, even, Stu, how'd you check the mail when you went down to the your end of your driveway and got into your mailbox? How, how did you check the mail? You pulled the mail out. Okay, here's your stack of mail. Don't have a yep. stack of mail anymore. You had your stack of mail. What's the first thing you did when you got back in the house? Separated the, the good mail from the stuff I need to read. Okay. What's good. Okay, good, good. Let's go with that. What's good mail. Um, good mail would be, you know, personal letters that someone wrote me. Okay. Checks in the mail. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Those type of things. Okay. So that's one pile. What's the next pile? Um, you know, spam. Well, you know, okay, okay. You know, but basically, advertisements for right. something. Just get, and, and where did that get sorted to? Um, maybe a read later type of thing, because whether there's coupons in it or something oh, you like didn't, that. Wow, you're a good guy. I have sorted over the trash can. <laughs> no, <laughs> I actually look at some of them, and yeah, you know, like I need a new roof, so you know, there's a fifty percent off roofing or or whatever. Okay. You know. Yeah, I'm not sure how much I trust the half off roof guy, but let's not, let's not go there. Yeah. Now the thing is though, it used to be that most people would sort their mail into three piles. People I know that I excited to see something from bills bills. Yeah. And junk junk, real high likelihood of getting thrown away. Now, when you go down to the mailbox, maybe a bill, maybe not. Nobody writes letters anymore. And you might get a postcard or two with some kind of direct mail thing. 
The mailbox is pretty empty now. There's mm. not a lot of competition, relatively speaking. True. So if you were to send something cool to a customer who knew you, liked you, trusted you, was interested in what you were doing, do you think you might be able to get a much better reaction? Absolutely. And with the cost of advertising going up, okay, sending something in the mail that might cost you a couple bucks to send, people will freak out over that, but they'll think nothing about spending two bucks to get a click from a stranger. So think about that as well. When you talk about getting somebody on a list, think about getting some of your best customers onto a physical mailing list. Oh, yeah. Just, just oh, yeah. a thought. I always keep these handy, Jim. Cool postcards. Oh, yeah. Right. Already, already ready to go. Just got to put an address in there. Boom. There you go. Oh, this one's already addressed. I got to mail these. And you <laughs> It helps if you put them in the mail. It's in my mail section now. And you use those postcards to get people to do what? Just online PT club. So yeah. my yeah, coach online coaching programs. Yeah, which is like hundreds of dollars. Yeah, so you're not, it's, it's not a book. Yeah. I'm so selling. would you spend fifty would you spend fifty cents for the chance to make several hundred dollars? Yes. Sure. That's better odds than a slot machine. True. And do people sign up from those? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I've sent out 50 um, a month ago, and I know I got three new people from it. Okay. So. So you bad. spent 50 or fifty or 100 bucks to make not a even. thousand. Oh, it was. Uh, yeah, I think it came out to like 75 cents each. Okay. So, so you a spent. Less than 100 bucks. Okay. Uh, less well, than. A, whatever you spent. You made mega yeah, multiples a of it. Yeah, yeah. About a thousand. Here's the thing. How did you ultimately get those people's physical mailing addresses? Um, they bought a book. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had their address from a previous sale. Yeah, yeah. they bought a yeah. book. Yep. That's the thing. You used the book to build the list. Even down to just the physical process of they bought the book and... So when they buy it off of your website, instead of you just referring them to Amazon, you're like, hey, I want their address. So I actually have my stuff printed on Lulu. So you do the pass through to Lulu. Lulu gives you their address, but Lulu does the printing and the shipping and all that stuff. But you still yeah. get that most valuable asset the is address. a customer and their that's physical true. address. I'm telling y'all, that, that's as, big. as people get dumber, with the with the spam filters and with the rules and the laws and the online privacy and all that other stuff the mail the physical mail is how is the only way ultimately you'll be able to own the customer so good morning everybody just want to say real quick before we dive into the stuff what's up mary what's up david sunny paul vicky mary jorge c ray Welcome, everybody. Sorry, I just wanted to say howdy to everyone, Stu. Um, that's all right. So there you go. That's that's kind of your side lesson that I wasn't expecting to to give you. But that's no, that's, that, that's good. I'm uh, glad it went that direction. So tell me this, Jim. Um, uh -huh. What's the best way to get people to give you their email? Can you bribe them? Yeah, bribe them. Just bribe them. Absolutely. You bribe people to give you their email address. Because here's the thing, when you, I want you to think about it like this. They're standing here, all right, and up here is a button, <laughs> like it's a button on the ceiling. Okay. And in order for them to push that button on the ceiling, right now they're weighed down by the belief that you're going to spam them. And here's the thing about spam. People aren't worried about spam. What they're worried about is you stealing their time, stealing their time, wasting their time. So what you have to do is pile on this giant Popeye looking weight of value that you push this thing down that ends up pushing down the teeter totter and they come up here and actually push the button to give you the email. That's the way I look at it. What I all I got to do 
is give them enough value to overcome their resistance to giving me their email. So one of the fastest ways to do that with a book is simply at the beginning of the book, give them an opportunity to register their book. This is one way you can do it. Literally tell them, hey, if you want to register your book and get this, 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 and this, click this link, go to whatever uh, the URL is, and you can offer them videos. You can offer them, you could even offer them private label rights stuff. I mean, just something, some type of bribe, some sort of value in exchange for them to registering the book. And just by using that nomenclature, there's a big word, but just by using that strategy of registering the book, you're going to get a certain number of people. And the neat thing is, is that if you're on Amazon or let's say somebody pirates your book or does something that way, somebody who didn't even quote unquote buy your book from you can still go register the book and can still get on your list and you have an opportunity to sell them something later. Yeah, every book of mine is an advertisement for every other book and to get on the list and to buy other things of my you know, page. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me this, if bribery works, what about blackmail? Can we do blackmail? It depends on how good you are with the uh, webcam. <laughs> but uh, if you can get that webcam to turn on and then not know it, there might be a blackmail opportunity. Just, okay. just that, I like that, the way you're thinking today. We're not yeah. sure what's in the D, but okay, <laughs> okay, all right. So uh, I've evolved with technology over the years, Jim, mm -hmm. and I have an app. There's an app for that. Um, is it, what's a good way to tie creating an app into your book and getting people to go on your app? So <clears throat> interestingly enough, my grandson John has your app on his phone. I'm not sure to what degree he's utilizing it. He's hinted around that I need to buy him uh, some of your books. <laughs> and uh, I told him as soon as you come out with the real-time workout video, we'll be uh, getting a whole bunch of stuff. I'm just playing. I'm working on it. But, you know, interestingly enough, everybody's got a phone. Everybody's talking about apps. I think there's a couple different ways you could look at an app. If you wanted to go through the time, energy, and effort to develop your own app, that's great if you want to do that. I mean, there's, there's, there's some definite pluses and minuses to that. What is an app? You know, an app can be a phone app. Other people call an app. We got an online app. You could even call the genies and wizards and stuff. We could call those apps if we wanted to, but hmm, I don't want to do the confusion. But what it is, is it's offering some sort of software, some sort of an app, a calculator, anything that's, that has to do with the topic of your book that will help people to get a result quicker, faster, easier. So like with your app, you also sell products from the app or you sell access to stuff from the app and then you promote the app inside your books. Yes. So if somebody gets the app, that's a way of them being on your list because you can communicate through the app. Now, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to develop your own app or go through all that stuff, one of the things that you can do is simply go to Google and put in your keyword plus like the word software or the word calculator or app and see what comes up you may be able to find something that you could just refer people to. Hey, I'll, you know, want to, want to know of an app that's going to help you come up with all the different disc profiles for a particular person. You can um, go over here to my website and I'll give you access to that. Now, in, in some cases that might just be, they opt in and you tell them where to go. You make a little demo video of how to use somebody else's app and then refer them to it. But your whole objective was to get them on your list. You can also, when you do that search, you may be able to sign, you may be able to find freeware or shareware. There was a time when freeware and shareware was was huge, and I think it still is if it's used correctly. People don't have a problem installing stuff on their computer to get a result. You just got to make sure that when you refer people to stuff 
that it's you know good quality, not installing any kind of malware or anything like that. You got to, in other words, got to do your own due diligence. But there are plenty of software programs out there, either online or downloadable, client side, as they say, that uh, you could potentially either refer people to or actually get a license to and be able to refer people. It's not, it's not hard. Something I like to do, Jim, is if, if let's say you don't want to, don't have the ability to put, create your own app, or it just doesn't make sense for what you're selling. Mm -hmm. Something that will, that you can put all throughout your ebook is links to you further explaining something on YouTube for instance, and get them to follow you on YouTube or maybe a link to a Instagram live Q and a session, you know, whatever that is, um, you know, a podcast, what, whatever you have some video of you doing, that's a great way to, like I said, pull them into your world, whether it's a social media video or it's, you know, linking them to an email list. Absolutely. And I know you do that a lot with your books with uh, exercises or different exercises, different uh, techniques and stuff like that, that enables people to be able to get a good result. But it's one thing to write about it. It's one thing to see a picture of it. It's another thing to see a video of you doing that. Now, the cool thing that you could do with that, and I think we're skipping ahead a little bit, but let's, let's go to talking about video enabling a book. So whatever your book is, chances are, The old thing of a picture's worth a thousand words, a video's worth 10,000 words. So instead of doing a direct referral to people to your YouTube channel, if you were, again, if that's how you're building your list though, is get them to go to your YouTube channel and then reward them, incentivize them for subscribing or commenting. But ultimately, again, I want them on something I can control. And the only thing I can control is the email address because YouTube can shut you down. They can demonetize you. Some chucklehead can complain about one little comment you made and they turn it into a federal issue. Um, Not that anyone would ever do that, but if I've got the email, I control it. So what if you took a collection of your best videos and just assembled them on a page? Okay. Nice. Yep. And then you could call it whatever you want, could call the fast track, could call it a, a, a what have you, my, my secret resource collection. And then you just put it behind an opt-in. So in order to get it, you make it part of that whole registration process for your book or go over here, sign up, and I'll give you access to this stuff. Hour, two hours worth of training that'll give you this benefit, this benefit, this benefit. And now we, we've utilized it the, the video content, but we have also gotten that registration, which is what we want. We want to get them on our list. Nice. Yeah, so. I would agree. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So tell me this, Jim, about audiobooks, right? So, have you ever used audiobooks to get people on the list? So I have used audiobooks a couple different ways. One, like what we did for uh, Copywriting Secrets. We, on the funnel, we offer as an order bump, Stu and I, I read the book to Stu because I knew he wasn't going to read it. I read the book to Stu (laughs) and then Stu asked me questions uh, because we'd been doing the podcast for a while and created a a really cool version of the audio book that we've used as an incentive to get people to buy. It's an order bump, but I've had several people say, you know, I bought because I wanted to get the audiobook version. Another thing I've done in the past with other books is a lot of my books have been created as a result of a training. So one of the ways that I'll create a book quickly is to do a transcript of a training and then add some stuff to it. But then tell people in the book, hey, if you'd like to get access to the uh, training that was the basis for this book, go here, register, boom. Sometimes we'll sell it. So here's the thing. Getting somebody on on your list from your book doesn't necessarily mean they have to get something for free. So you can sell something in your book to get people onto the list. 
So just, just keep that in mind. Not, not all of this has to be free. Yes, we want to get their email, but the email of someone who buys something is worth, in my experience, at least 10 times the worth of somebody who just got something for free and is on your list and you're waiting for them to buy something. I would much rather have a list of a thousand people who have bought something than a list of 10,000 people who got something for free. Yeah. Good point. So there you go. <clears throat> so, and the cool thing is that, you know, having an audio book, audio version of your book is easy. I mean, you can sit down and read it yourself. If, 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 you know, you wrote it, you could sit down and read it yourself. You can pay somebody to read it. Um, if you've done it as an interview or something like that, it's already done. You can divide it up into sections. There's just, it's, it's really easy to turn your book into a quote unquote audio book. Yeah, definitely. The audio book helps me read the book because I'll read it in my house and then I'll put the audio book on in the car, you know, get a couple chapters under while I'm driving. So a lot of people just don't have time to read a book. Right. Um, how, how can we, you know, use that? Um, as a factor to get them on the list. So one of the things that I like to do, if some, again, people buy books and then don't read them because they, they buy them, they love the promise of the book and they want to get around to reading them. Um, sometimes you can conquer that with the audiobook version. I mean, I'll have books where I bought the audiobook version and I, when I'm running and not dodging neighborhood dogs, um, <laughs> I'll listen to it. You know, the funny thing is, is that while I'm running, I can listen to an audio book at one and a half speed and it I'll have better comprehension. My mind won't wander than if I'm listening to it at one one X, just something I've figured out. But yet when I'm sitting still, I can't listen to a book faster than one X. It's just interesting as an aside. I don't know if anybody who's here live with us has encountered that at all or if I'm just weird, but we know that I'm weird. So one of the things that you can offer that you'll see a lot of people offer inside of audiobooks, but also in regular books, is some sort of a handout, some sort of a cheat sheet, some sort of a, an exercise that is related to what's inside the book. So that helps you get that particular important result from their book faster. And so uh, a mentor of mine, uh, a gentleman named J. Conrad Levinson, he wrote the guerrilla marketing books. He was the originator of the guerrilla marketing concept. Um, he started as a mentor of mine. He didn't know me. I met him through email. And then uh, eventually he and I had shared the stage a couple of times and became friends. And uh, I remember in a limousine one day, he told me, yeah, I have a friend that has a really uh, popular diet book. He said, but the, the funny thing is about books, especially diet books, the premise of his book is you need to have at least two tablespoons of fiber a day and move for 30 minutes. You just got to turn that into 200 pages. <laughs> Some people are okay with you giving them the cliff note version, giving them the quick checklist, giving them the quick process, giving them the quick summary. They bought the book. You got your money. Let's get them on the list by offering them a shortcut to getting the result, either the result for the whole book, understanding, be able to get through it real quick, or a part of the book, the most important part of the book. So doing process maps, golden nuggets, cliff notes, uh, exercise things, special handouts. Those are a great way to get people to register the book, to sign up to your list. And you know, the funny thing is we've talked about a bunch of things in this video and other videos, but a lot of these techniques, you could use all of them. Think like thinking mechanically. I want you to envision a page on your website hidden behind an opt-in. They have to give you their name and email. But then all these things, you know, you could have some videos, you could have the cheat sheet, you could have uh, the resource, the link to a cool uh, to a cool piece of software. All that can be on the same page. 
It's just like one page that they get access to, but then you can mention the different things throughout the book in the appropriate places, but you just have to create one thing. You're just giving them a bunch of different invitations throughout the book. So this isn't something that has to be complicated or a big pain in the butt. Hey, you mentioned checklists, but I, I think a checklist can be used a little differently. How, how would you use a checklist differently than what you just explained? So the way you would use a checklist specifically is a checklist implies that if you go through the checklist, mm -hmm. you will get the promised result. Mm -hmm. So a checklist is, is either available for the whole book or you can use it in individual chapters or you can use it attached to a specific outcome in the book. But the reason why a checklist is so important and so valuable and so useful is because it's a checklist is always tied to a result. And so you just understand the results that people want, create a checklist for that. And then the easiest thing to do is to offer the checklist as a PDF from your website. Now, I'll give you a little trick. That PDF, anytime you publish anything as a PDF, and if it's good, people are going to share it, pass it around, rip it off, include it with different things, send it to their friends. All right. So make sure that that PDF leads back to the book. Make sure that PDF leads back to whatever you were using to get people to opt in, to get people to, to get in there so you can build your list. That's one thing I've noticed is that it's like, hey, here's here's the checklist. But it's like that checklist needs to be able to stand on its own and in such a way that it will bring people back to you. Otherwise, people really are just ripping you off. Maybe intentionally, maybe unintentionally, it doesn't matter. So make sure that that PDF, anything that someone's downloading that's related to the book is fully branded is fully, uh, it, it's integrated. So anybody who gets that is like, oh, this is part of something. Let me go check out this book. Let me go check out this guy. Not just, hey, here's this PDF that came from somewhere that's amazing. So that's just a little aside. So, okay. So how about the difference between checklists and uh, resource list or toolkits? I, I've used those as well for like equipment people need to do my programs. Right. Things like that. Yeah. So the difference between a checklist and a, a resource list or something like that is that a checklist Im implies steps. Okay. Really, it, you know, a checklist of getting ready to take off in an airplane, a checklist of what you should, you know, do to get somewhere. And it's also tied to a process map as opposed to a resource list or a toolkit, which is a list of stuff. It's still a list, but it's not a checklist. It's, it's a list of, stuff you could use, a list of stuff you should use, but typically it's not in order. It's just like, here's what to go, what goes in your go bag. So we'll use, let's say you had a, a book on um, survive, urban survival, Stu Smith's urban survival guide, how to escape the city when the zombies strike. All right. Get my personal resource list, my personal packing list, my personal uh, toolkit list of what I have in my bag, what I use for a flashlight, what I use for a, um, a knife, for hydration, for food, for shelter, for warmth, all these different things. And it's, it's a list. It's not really a checklist. It's a resource list. Now, the cool thing you can do with those is that's actually a really good opportunity for additional income when you're doing a True. resource list like that, because you of course would populate that with your affiliate links. So in, in when someone reads your book and uh, they see that you are the expert because your book makes you the expert, then you say, Hey, I'll give you access to my personal resource list. I'm going to tell you the exact tools I use to do stuff, the exact software I use to get a result. People are like, heck yeah, I want to know what you use. I want to know what you're doing. So, you know, the, the key is that when you put these things on the list, it's got to help them do stuff 
you know, faster, easier, cheaper, more efficiently. It's, it's all tied to a result, but it's more like stuff. It's, it's rather than a checklist, which is steps. So stuff versus steps. How about that? Okay. Yeah, I like that. So earlier we talked about bribes. Um, What about discounts? Uh, Do you see them in the same area? Discounts or money off or buy one, get one free? I think that if you can make, if you can reward somebody for being a customer or thinking they're a customer or to get somebody to buy again quickly, you want to get them into that mode of buying stuff from you because people go through seasons. You know, I just, as an example, this has nothing to do with a book, but this morning I made a $1,100 purchase from a company um, that I have bought stuff from before. They send me emails every week. Somehow my wife got on their list too. And she's like, Hey, you need anything from them? Which to me is implicit permission to buy whatever the heck I want. Yeah. Mm. Um, But now I know that they're going to send me, they know that I know that they know that someone who buys is likely to buy again, if you give them the right incentive quickly. So why not bake that into a book? Why not either offer them the next step inside the book? Hey, Next step of this be this book, it'd be this product, it'd be our PT club, whatever it is. And here's a discount code for X amount off the total Mm -hmm. thing or X amount off your first month. Um, I'm not a big believer in doing the, the, you know, for new customers only, which I think is stupid. That just pisses people off. You know what what I'm talking about when somebody, it's like, hey, we have these cool discounts, but only for new customers. Well, what about us? We've been paying you all this time. So, you know, I know you use discount codes. So what, what if, okay, what if you had a discount code that was like the customer discount code that just, here's your personal discount code because I like you and pretty much anything you ever buy from me, if you want to use this code, you can get a discount or it's good for the next, whatever. I'm not saying, you know, there, there are pluses and minuses for that, but you know, or at least Somehow you could tie it when they buy. It's like, hey, here's a discount code for 15% off anything we have that's good for the next 30 days. I know Go Ruck does that a lot. Yeah. You know, they because they know that if you're gonna buy, if we get you to buy again, get you to buy again, get you to buy again. So just tying those things, actually putting them in the book or tying them to the actual sign up. So that's another thing. Hey, would you like 20% off your next purchase? Go sign up to our list. So you don't necessarily have to put it in the book. You put it in an email when they, when they register. But yeah, I think discounts and rewarding people for being customers is a smart deal. Um, you know, you very infrequently, especially if you're like in the elite level of copyandcontent.ai, infrequently will you pay full boat for anything. We always try to make discount offers to reward people for being customers. So you basically make them members of your site, right? Yeah. Um, You know, I've always liked the idea of saying, you know, you get this free membership to my site when really they're getting a free newsletter. Right. Right. So it's, it's not necessarily trickery, but it's just, language it's, 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 it's different language by saying yeah it's a hey, sign up for my free newsletter like yeah. not many people want to do that or do all you the time want, sign up to get email <laughs> no one's going to do that but get a free membership in my get it get a free membership in my in my online club and then that's where you can start introducing different levels they've already i taken on the identity of, i have a member okay i'm a bronze member what does silver, gold, platinum, diamond, ruby, what does that entail? What does that get me? So I think that's important. And you can include, again, you can include, includes membership in the something, something, something club. And now, you can offer that as well. Another thing um, you can offer is coaching sessions. Yes. Right. If you have that time and you're really trying to sell something of, higher value, I would assume, right? Well, 
there's two different ways that you can use a book to sell coaching. The first way is to offer a paid coaching session. Hey, I charge 500 bucks an hour, but here's a special link for 200 bucks. I'll spend 50 minutes with you and we'll come up with this plan, this plan, this plan, this plan. So it's like 60% off. That's one way of doing it. Another way you can do it is if you've got a high ticket program that is only going to be sold over a Zoom call, then you can offer a free strategy session where you actually, you or somebody else gets on it. And instead of looking at it as an expense of, oh my God, I got to spend 30 minutes with somebody. It's like, hey, I'm going to get this opportunity to meet somebody who bought my book, who meets certain criteria. So you can build a questionnaire into the front end so that you make sure you're talking to somebody who's qualified. But literally you could talk to you, use the book to fill your calendar with people that you could be doing sales calls with. They get value. You get an opportunity to sell them something and you're already positioned as the expert because of the book. That's cool. Have you ever done, I've seen this done and I'm thinking about this is one of my next to do's is have a book, have a test in that book and then be able to grade it. And I'm just trying to figure out that grade it and give a certificate on the back end of that book. I know that you can do that. That is yeah. actually, actually relatively simple to do. Yeah. So, you know, have some sort of a certification. Right. Open book. Right. <laughs> you can even do that. So it's open book certification. I mean, I was just going to do a physical fitness test, like have them videotape them swimming, running, you know, whatever. Uh, and, yeah. you know, do a test on the back end and be like, say, certified. Stu Smith standards. Stu Smith certified. Because I'm Stu Smith, buddy. <laughs> I think I think any kind of assessment quiz test, anything like that that you could do, you know, they read the book, they take the test, they get a certificate. People love that. I think it would be help more helpful in on some stuff than others, but you could even again turn it into a turn it into a profit center. Download the PDF or for X amount of dollars you'll get a professionally printed and framed and actually signed by somebody. Everybody wants to have cool stuff hanging on the wall behind them to prove that there's something. So again, depending on what you're doing. Now, the one thing you want to be careful of is that you're not, you know, inferring that they're getting college credit or anything like that. However, interestingly enough, many industries have and need to get every year a certain number of continuing education credits. And getting CE credits and getting your stuff to count as CE credits in certain industries is not very hard at all. No, it, it is basically submitting what you're doing to the, that certification company. And they usually, nine times out of 10, will say, Right. Check. So now you can advertise it as this CEUs gets you search CEUs and CE. Yeah. This just whatever. That's a whole different ball game. Yeah. Of coolness. So that's a great, that's a great thing to look at. So let's, um, let's do one or two more of these and then we got to wrap it up. Cause I got a, another one coming up hopefully. And, and in the comments, let us know, are you getting anything out of this? Is this giving you some ideas? If you've got a book, if you're in the middle of like, you're in our right, write your book.ai challenge, or uh, you've got a book. Is this giving you any ideas on what you might be able to do within your book to start building your list? Or is anybody excited? Just let us know in the comments if this is helpful for you. All right. So I, I think we can wrap it up, Jim. It's like, where do you put these? These are lead magnets, right? So where do you put offers. these? Yeah. Offers, lead mag. Where do you put these in your Kindle eBooks? So I would say that what you want to do is sprinkle them throughout. So at the beginning, that would make sense for you to want to offer the register this book. Hey, 
Register this book in order to get valuable benefits. Here's all the stuff you'll get when you register the book. So that kind of goes at the beginning. Throughout the book, if you have something where you're like, hey, if you'd like a special checklist for this, go here. So it's it's not really ads, but it's more calls to action at that moment that somebody, you think about it from the customer perspective. It's like, hey, if I saw this, would it make sense to say, hey, and if you'd like to see a video demonstrating this process, boom, go here. And or if you're talking about something that might be a little complicated and say, hey, if you'd like to piece to see a piece of software that I use to make this process go from two hours down to two minutes, click here to watch a cool demo. So it it's not like these are ads throughout. It's just little, hey, by the way, you know, like Stu said when i went up to visit him and and he he's like oh dude you got to try these things that hook on your i don't even know what the hell you call them yeah. but as soon as i saw him i was like oh i'd like to have some of those he's like well here take these oh thanks Stu. um but i mean it's it's like in context these little landmines or trip wires don't need a whole lot of explanation in fact if it's like Shakespeare, I, I fear thou dost protest too much. It's like the more you, it's it's got to be a by the way thing. You know, hey, by the way, if you want to see a video showing how this goes, just click here. I'll show you in three minutes. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll put it over there. I'll go check that out. Mm. So they go liberally throughout. And then at the end, hey, if you enjoyed this, you ought to join the PT club. Hey, if you enjoyed this, you need to join copyingcontent.ai. Hey, if you enjoyed this, then it makes sense that you would want to do this over here. So that's what you do. You, you don't spring it on them. It, it just makes, it totally makes sense that you mention stuff wherever. And yes, you will have some ass hat <laughs> that will in somewhere do a review that says, it's nothing but a big, pitch good that means you actually have it in there enough yeah if everybody's like hey it's nothing but a big pitch it's like hey ease off a little bit there but you know one or two people saying that just means means you've got it balanced pretty well so there you go man that was a lot jim that was a lot but here's the thing writing a book is a big deal Getting results from that book is a result of strategy and tactics and doing it. The journey doesn't end when the book is finished. The journey is pretty much just starting when the book is finished. So anyway. Yeah, you know, I, I counted hyperlinks in one of my eBooks just because mm -hmm. I was curious and I had <laughs> well over a hundred. Wow. Okay. In my in my ebooks nice because those each, are like like you know there's a page that's you know books written by Stu, right right and it's 40 different books right there all on one page with hyperlinks directly to that book not to the store right to that book yeah and then from there you know videos on swimming and you know videos on every single exercise that i had a picture of you can hype, you know, control click and see a video of that picture in motion. Absolutely. It's huge. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, so don't, don't be scared to hyperlink, especially if absolutely. you got a website with related articles, videos. Absolutely. Absolutely. That'll, that'll keep your people with you. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's all we got, guys. If you're not a member of copyingcontent.ai, you should be. Uh, if you are curious about our writeyourbook.ai challenges, make sure you head over to writeyourbook.ai. If it's available for you to sign up, you can sign up or jump on the waiting list or bookmark it or do whatever you got to do. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all next time. Great job, Stu. And uh, you, everybody sir. have a great day.